Well, here we are on another cold, grey, rainy English day, and I uh, hear the rain just pattering in the background on the conservatory. Now we're down to the last two paintings I was going to do you for this particular um, foundation in watercolour, these very basics, which are taking you from the very basics up to slightly more advanced work, so you've gradually worked your way through seeing how these techniques can work. This time we're going to be doing this particular picture, uh, another French scene here. Um, not one of my photographs this time. I've got plenty more of mine just coming up. I've just uh, found a whole folder that I'd lost um, that I did in Provence about 20 years ago and happened to just type into the computer a certain title and this folder that I'd lost had just reappeared and I've quickly copied off the ones I want. So we've got some lovely ones for the future coming up. Um, but in the meantime, um, we'll do this one and it's on hot press paper, slightly smoother, more traditional techniques, just carefully um, working this picture up more delicately. Uh, I was originally going to use this as a pastel, but I don't think I would, you know, I've just been doing plenty of watercolour pastels for you. But I'm going to do this a little more delicately, and then the next one afterwards is a full sheet of paper, which is going to be done with a big brushwork, much more loosely, more stridently. This one's being done, as I say, as, as a final exercise with the more delicate Winsor Newton watercolours, artists of course. And then the next one's going to be done with the Russian set I've got, which is much more strident and slightly thicker paint, not quite so transparent, but stronger colours. So it'll be interesting for you to see, I hope, I hope it will, it'll be interesting for you to see the difference between the, the two um, types of watercolour and these two techniques. There we go then. Now I'm going to start off with a fairly small round brush. Um, I shan't be using big wash brushes on this one, I don't think. And a lot of this painting is going to be to do with what we call lost and found edges. So in other words, on here we've got sharp edges, then we've got others that are bleeding into each other here, and then again light against dark here, the dark uh, paint over the dry paint underneath, and then wet next to wet here and so on. So gradually working up these areas um, as to lost and found, and tightening up as, as we go along. Let's see how we get on with that. Okay, we'll start off with, um, say we've got some very lovely light colours going on behind here, that's that. The tree's coming through here, so have to work out what's going on where. Um, I'm going to leave quite a few whites in this, let it sparkle. Let's start off with this area of trees here, and um, I'm going to go back, and I keep loving this colour, but I'm going to be using my Oriole in yellow a bit again here, um, straight away on these on this bunch of trees here. So I want to get my light areas in, so I'll work that straight into there. Right down and through the branch here. Now that's what we call a wash then, isn't it? It's a wash with colour. Now I need to drop into that, so I want to get my cools going slightly. I'm going to take some cerulean blue. And at the moment, as I say, I'm just painting wet into wet techniques, the, the uh, paper's on a very slight slope my teeth in for that one, slight slope. So we're going to leave these little bits of light shining through at the edges here. Just softly get the effect of light. And hopefully what will happen is, as this paint dries, as I'm working, and there's, there's good time for this, um, as this paint dries, come right down through there as well, because actually that cool colour is coming right down behind here down to there where the darks are, and all the way down to there in fact. So we'll take that colour right through there, let it come into these little bits of light. So there we are, we've got, already we've got an effect of light going on here. Now I want to start going into that, <coughs> a slightly warmer green, and a little bit of ultramarine. So it's a wee bit darker, and yet again, we'll start dropping into that to get the soft effects of light. Spreading out there. And what I want to do then is let it dry off a bit, because I need to come in with some slightly harder edges of the wet over the dry. That light's coming down there. Coming down into here. Now this gets quite dark here. So I want to drop those darks in. I'm going to drop some really lovely deep darks into that. Go down to my indigo. 
be very dark straight away because of brown and that. And I'm going to let that dark drop straight in there immediately. And spread out along down here. The textures. Doing the wet into wet, letting little bits of that blue texture show through there before it dries out too much. And that's coming up behind the branch and into here as well. Right up through these little pieces here, into here, and it comes up back into here as well. So just section by section in this case, delicately placing these colours in. Now I want to let that dry off a bit now, but we've got that dark actually coming up through here as well. So let's just put that in while I'm at it. Normally put the darks over the lights, but it is possible to come in and put some lights across and around the darks as well. Green is coming up right through into here. There we go. Now these slightly harder edges look as the paint gets drier there. So we'll let that just dry off there. So it's step by step, isn't it? And while that's working there. We'll come across to similar areas elsewhere, here for instance. We can bring that aurel in yellow. And while it's still wet, we've got to get into those. So back with the cerulean again. And uh, we'll start dropping in now. Again, let's bring these cools up into here. It's just wet enough. Be careful. I say watercolour is a a battle of timing. You've got to just get the timing on the wet paint just right so that either you're putting wet into wet next to wet or over dry or whatever you're going to do, you've got to get this timing right. And lost and found edges, you see. We'll be doing it over here a little bit. Well, uh, how we can make those now because it's a bit drier, look, we can bring these sharper edges in across this and we're getting lost and found edges of these leaves. I rather enjoy the textures we've got already, don't you? I mean it's looking quite fun even now before we even get right into the painting. You might have thought I was going to build up my, my light colours in the background first but I want a lot of white in this painting, I want a lot of light colours so I'm deliberately going to work up these darks first of all in this case. Just put a few of these darks in here so get the feeling of depth ready there. Back up to these trees now, it is now. so we can come back with the, with the deeper greens here and I can just start to pick out some harder sharper darks across these leaves here and there. Turquoise first there. I want it too thick and uh, just work in some glazes of that at the top here first of all. So I'll wash there and then we're going to put some glazes over in a moment. The same around here. I have plenty of white left showing there so I don't want to pin that out yet too much. And that colour comes down there. Dark with light coming from the between the leaves of the trees, right round there. I'll well, continue with this painting, you can hear the rains pouring down around us. It's a lot nicer in the scene we're painting, isn't it? So, let's continue. And this lovely, lovely pink going on, which is actually quite an awkward colour to try and make. I'll play around with that a bit. I'm going to try mixing it with cobalt violet and a little bit of rose to see if that does the job. But it's not an easy colour to make. 
we're going on behind here. I can afford to go over the paint slightly in places. That needs to be warmed up. Now that's a glaze. There's our wash. There's a glaze going over the, the dry paint. Look at this area here, shall we? Some beautiful colours happening there. We'll start with the turquoise there. I want to leave a lot of white here. So I'm going to flood down these areas of lighter turquoise against the just let that pink flood down to white a little bit there put a bit of clean water just to let it link up I want to indicate these sorts of colors back here now give me back to the got some lettering on here and unless I paint it back in with white paint it's going to be very difficult to leave it behind isn't it so we'll have a bit of fun we'll try so I need to leave the effect of lettering just there I need to get some sort of colours into the background down here. We seem to have a strange mix of pinky blue violets going on. Let's see what I can find that might do the job. Quite a thin wash I suspect. That's going on down right through here. Try and blend that bit of paint in as well that blobbed there earlier. Right round and through into the tabletops. A lot of this is going to be wet into wet. It has to be because simply can be painted. Let's see if we can do it in just a few brush strokes, shall we? Get this guy in. His leg comes down there. This one comes forward and then just drops back. Stylize him slightly, but we want to get it nice and simple here. Somebody dark behind here as well. Got other figures around here light against the dark tops of their heads maybe a bit darker I'll put those colors in in just a moment just darker under there his wrist got a couple of um there's a table and chair leg coming out here now those chairs have to be made a bit darker so i'm going to take again my raw sienna come down to these chairs a bit, strengthen them out, so there's so many ways we can paint a scene and the works I'm going to do again is going to be totally different yet again so you know it's going to be quite interesting for you I think. There's some very lovely bright reds going on here that I want to try and get so next thing I'm going to do is to take some chrome yellow and deliberately drop those where these bright reds are going to go. It's here and next to him here, this fella. Really bright reds. There's a guy standing up here which is also a bright red and over here there's another figure. There's a little bit of a sign down there. Now if I take some bright red, literally called bright red, and carefully drop that in I should get the sort of bright red that I want by dropping it into the orange, like this. And what to do is use a slightly cooler red in places and I'll be able to make those sing out by making one against another. Gradually work up more and more indications and hints of details. Provided we get them in the right places, they should, they should work. I 
And there we have our painting. We have to decide how far we're going to go because it would be easy to overdo this. We don't want to go too far with it, just, just all these little indications of people and figures and the impression of it. It is an impressionist piece, remember. Right, what I haven't done yet is this tree, which is quite a major thing. And um, I'm going to go to my sienna for that, drop it in here. Right, now I want to go really dark into that, so I'm going to take my alizarin and drop that down through into there. Right down both sides, I've got a lot of green in the middle. As I was saying, just now a bit of green into it as well. There we go, nice bit of green coming up into here. These lovely dark matte colours. Right up and into that branch. How a sharp edge works against wet on dry, as you can see now here. We've already got our branches down here. We'll put a couple more in there just for fun. A bit of dry brushwork of the greens maybe through here in places. Let's put a few of these dark greens, put these greens into here a bit. Just pick this pavement out a fraction here and there with some greens. And I mean, as a painting goes, that's probably about Probably about it, really. You don't need to go much further with this particular painting. I just will mark a few more things in, but I mean, we, we, we kept it loose, we kept it lively. Um, so, a rather worked up watercolour, but that's one way of doing it. And the next one is going to be totally different. Much, much, much looser. Lift out a fraction down here. Get that figure a little clearer just there, so we'll just lift out a bit of that. Right, better stop, or it would be easily overworked. But there we go. Hope you enjoyed that, and now we'll go on to an even looser one than this. Well, there we are then, another loose little watercolour. Um, this done on the hot press paper, smooth surface, and just delicately built up. Now let's move on to the biggie. Before we start, I'm just going to stretch some watercolour paper. Right, um, to finish off this last painting of the series, this great big one, um, which I should really enjoy doing, of the street scene in, in Provence, um, it's nice to do a big watercolour again. I've done all these smaller ones and just sort of fairly rough ones just to give you techniques. So I've just been doing a fine one for you on smooth paper, on the hot press. Now we're going to use a rough paper, so a 140 pound piece of, uh, of rough. Uh, some Waterford, um, so I'm going to need to stretch it and uh, that's something you might want to see again. You see at the moment here I've got a roll of gum tape and, I've, and I'm taking off at the moment the width of the gum tape uh, the same width as the board. This board is only just big enough, I'm going to have to tape around the edges. Um, the thing that I'm doing this straight away because I don't want to get any wet on the side of the gum tape. So do this before you get any water anywhere because one mark on here and the whole roll is spoiled. So we've got my gum tape ready, legs and widths. And I've got a nice big sheet here. Make sure you get the paper the right way up. There's two sides to watercolour paper. If uh, most papers, um, like Bockingford and so on, when you hold them up to the light you can see a watermark through them saying the name or a print. On this particular stuff there isn't any, but we just have to look at the surface and make sure we've got the correct surface. And that's not always easy to tell, but one side has always like a canvas feel to it, which is the wrong side, and the other side will be a, a watercolour surface. As you can see, it's all already done, just here on Blue Peter. Um, so I've already stretched this one, a smaller sheet, um, and I'm going to have one both sides now. 
This is the hot pressed, smoother paper. You can see I've already got a drawing made out on that ready to go. So a nice heavy board in this case. Turn that over and I'm ready to go on this side just to make sure this stay clean. But I do want to get this stretched out and ready for the future. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this to the uh, bathroom. I could, a smaller sheet I can just run underneath the um, tap, but a big sheet I'm going to need to go to the shower. Well, I don't need tons of water for this, just enough to do the job. Move that towel around. It's not going over the shower side. I'm going to start with the back. And make sure it's really well soaked all the way down. On the back. That's all. Cool. Good soaking. Then turn it over. And to the other side. Plenty of it. So it's well soaked. Nice gentle shower on there. Turn the shower off. And by the time I get both myself and the paper from the shower room and the camera set up into here, uh, that paper's had plenty of time to stretch. But normally, would lay it on and let it stretch a while until it starts to couple a bit, and then lift it and re-stretch it. So it's going to be have a tight fit. I'm going to have to put the tape back around the edges on this one. But since I do want to work large on this particular piece. Next we need to do the tape. The tape's nice and easy, I can just come to the sink for that. Turn the tap and just literally bring the tape between your fingers through. And there we are. We can actually see that the paper has cockled a bit. So I want to just lift it and straighten it again because that's the whole point of it, that when it cockles it will straighten out. So we need to have that from that way from the start. Then take the gum tape and lay that about half and half or a third and two thirds across. Make sure there's enough on the paper though because it can tear away and rub that right down around the corners in this case. And that's as easy as that. And all we have to do with the other pieces. It's still actually copying, so it's still expanding, even though it's had time. But that will straighten out later. Turn out of the paper. Make sure we've enough over. Not ideal by any means, but these must and it will do the job. It also frames it nicely for when you're painting. It gives the um, framer also something to work to. As you know you're working within this amount and you've still got a border there to mount up to. So right across there and then fold it round in this case. Not ideal, as I say, I prefer to have a board that's the right size, but my big board is in France. So I've got to make do, and needs must here. So we let that dry now, naturally. Don't heat it, otherwise the paper can split. And then once that's done, I can draw out ready 